I'm gonna try to buy this little C10 here. I bid on it the other day, just in case I forgot about it. I didn't want to forget it and let it sell dirt cheap, but uh, she's 900 bucks right now, which is towards the upper end of what they normally bring in an auction. So I'm not gonna get too carried away, but I'll probably go 1200 or so on it. Doesn't tell if it runs or not. It just says that it came out of a parted out truck, but I'm betting based on the way they've got it taped up and built up on a stand and everything that it probably does. So uh, we'll see what happens here. You got seven minutes to go. All right, 20 seconds, I'll go ahead and put my bid in. We're in the lead at 1,000 now, and it'll keep adding time. Yep, we got her bought, thousand bucks. That's a pretty good buy. Now I gotta drive eight hours to go get the piece of shit, which is just what I need to be doing right now. Well, here she is. It's a cute little thing, ain't it? I ended up hiring a guy to haul it to me. It cost me a few hundred bucks, but it was well worth it because it saved me about 18 hours worth of driving on the round trip. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is take it outside and clean it up a little bit before it gets dark. Not gonna get it clean by any means, but I can get it better than what it is. And then I'll drag it back in here and start figuring out what I've got.
So uh, there is actually a reason that I wanted to C10. It's not an engine that I normally deal with, but um, well, I'll just show you. There's gonna be a video on this machine, but it's not ready yet. That's uh, 100,000 pounds of 345B Series 2 Cat right there. So now you're probably asking yourself, okay, so that excavator's got a C10 in it. Well, yes and no. It's called a 3176C in that machine, but it's essentially the same as this C10. Same block, same crank, same cylinder head, same camshaft. Pretty much all the same top end parts, same front structure. Uh, really the only difference between the two engines is that this is a truck engine and that's a machinery application engine. So a little different turbo, different injectors, different flywheel housing, a few other small details like that. But uh, in a pinch, a guy could, if that engine and that excavator was to blow up or something, you could pull it out of there, swap a few parts around over to this engine, put this engine in the machine and run it as is. That would be a possibility. You know, that's not anything that I hope ever has to happen, but wanted this more so just for spare parts so that I'd have a spare block and crank and everything so that uh, if I wanted to, I could start building an engine for that machine in the background without having to pull the engine out of it and take it down for a long period of time. I could build the engine out of this and then just do a quick engine swap in a couple days it'd be back up and running. I guess I need to see if this thing will rotate 360. Haven't even checked it yet and if it will I will proceed with trying to get it fired up. It ain't short on compression, that's for sure. All right, we've got all the rotation. Okay, let's pull a valve cover off of it, see what it looks like in there. Pretty good stuff in here, looks like. So obviously this engine's got jakes on it and uh, I don't need them. If anybody wants them, you can shoot me an email, I'll sell them. I got no use for them. Tag says they'll go on a 3176B and a C10. Not sure if that's water that was you know, water in the oil from like a bad liner O-ring or if this is just condensation or what. It really just looks like condensation to me. It doesn't look like coolant, but all in all, not too bad. This is pretty common for engines that sit around a lot. When you buy them, you just never know what you're going to find under the valve covers. So not seeing anything that scares me too much here. So to give you a little more info about this engine, I haven't really said too much about it yet. Uh, C10 is a 4.9 inch bore by five and a half inch stroke, makes 10.3 liters of displacement. This engine is more or less the same as a C12. A C12 has just got a little bigger bore, a little longer stroke, different crankshaft, but the block's the same. So C10, C12, 3176C, 3176B, you could call those all basically the same engine family. They're all more or less the same engine, just with some different combinations of bore and stroke and you know a few other minor differences. So. Real similar to what you find with like 3406E, C15, C16, C18 family, which is, those are the engines that I know quite a bit about. I'm not uh, any kind of an expert on these, but these are set up real similar to an E model or a C15. It's an EUI engine, same fuel system and all that. So uh, even though I'm not real familiar with these, they're really not that far out of my wheelhouse. They're just almost the same engine, just smaller. So few uh, differences that I have noticed, like on an E-model or C-15, that would be a fuel return line. And that's actually a coolant line on this engine. 
the fuel return and supplies in this little manifold deal here. This rail, this aluminum rail that runs along here is a fuel manifold. So the fuel's coming in obviously into the transfer pump. It's coming out of the transfer pump down there. Comes along through here, runs through the ECM, which is the way the 40 pin cat ECMs work. Uh, they run fuel through them for cooling. And then out of the ECM up here to the filter head, it'll go through the filter, come out of the filter head, go into this fuel manifold. And then somehow or another that thing's ported to where it's feeding fuel into the cylinder head. It's running through the gallery. And then it's coming back out also through this manifold. It'll come back into this filter head and then back out through that fitting right there. And that's the return to tank fitting. So a little different than an E-model, but overall pretty much the same all the same sensors that all do kind of the same thing and uh yeah a little different engine but really a whole lot the same too another big difference between this engine family and the 3406e engine family would be that the uh, camshaft runs in the block in these engines and it runs in the head in the 3406e engine family so you can see down in there maybe there's some lifters down in there and then some push rods. This thing was rated 370 from the factory. I think you can see that there. So I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing 370 is probably the highest rating that you could get in a C10 truck engine. Don't know what it'll do for torque. I assume it's probably somewhere between 1250 and 1450. I can't really see this little engine doing any more than 1450. And that's foot pounds. So uh, I guess what I'll do now is plug into it with ET. We will see where it's rated at now. I'm sure it's still probably a 370. We'll see what the torque rating is and see how many miles and hours it shows. All right, I've got all this garbage rigged up. But it uh, looks like the engine serial number in the ECM matches the tag, which is what I expected to find. It's got a Freightliner VIN number, which adds up because this thing originally went to Freightliner when it was new. So it doesn't appear that it's really ever been messed with as far as the ECM. See what it's rated at. So yeah, it's still a 370, 1,350 foot-pounds of torque at 1,200 RPM. Doesn't appear that it's ever really been messed with. Let's check out the totals on it. So total time almost 24,000 hours total distance just shy of 745,000 miles that's quite a few miles on a c10 so uh anyway let me get all this stuff unrigged and i'll re-rig it with all the stuff we need to fire it up and then i will see if this piece of shit will start and these two active codes here for those of you that want to know one of them's a throttle position invalid. That's there because there's no throttle pedal connected to it. And then coolant level signal invalid is there because the coolant level sensor is turned on in the ECM, but obviously there's no radiator or tank on here, so it's not getting a signal back from it. Uh, that's all that is. Okay, I've got everything rigged up to make it run here. Those two batteries are feeding the starter to crank the thing over. ECM's wired up. This battery back here is powered in the ECM. Fuel suction there on the left, fuel return on the right. Got an oil pressure gauge rigged up here, but uh, this gauge is bad, so it may move or it may not. Throttle pedal bolted on, wired up. So it's actually about a day later right now than what you were just watching. I had to quit yesterday, and then long story short, I ended up pretty far into the bush lights. And then I got back down here late last night and I was just struggling. I mean, melting posts right off of batteries. It was just a disaster. So uh, that's what you're gonna watch right now. And then after that, I'll bring you back to now and we'll keep going with this. Starter button here. Here we go.
Well, I sure thought it was gonna go, but it sure didn't. Okay, I pumped on the hand primer a little more. Let's try her again. Before I check all this wire and all that garbage, let's just shoot a little ether in it. See what happens. Well, come on now. Thing just needs a little encouragement, that's all it is. Well, I don't know. I think the bush lights might have taken their toll here. I'm at a loss. It'll run on ether, but it just won't run. Where's the starter button? Here it is. Man, I don't know, there's an extravagant amount of blow by there. So, uh, whew. Boy, I think I took half that can of ether. All right, so you just saw that it'll run on ether, but it won't run on its own. It's not fueling for some reason. So, uh, just like a 40 pin 3406E truck engine, this is also a single speed slash timing sensor engine. And what that means is that it will not run without that sensor. So that's the next thing that I want to check and verify that we are getting a reading back from the sensor. So uh, the easiest way to troubleshoot that is just to plug back into it with ET for now. So we've got all this garbage back out. And what I'll do here is crank on this thing and I'll be watching engine speed right there. And then I'll also watch engine oil pressure just to see if anything comes up there. If it does, we'll know that the pump's working and I can quit worrying about this junk gauge. So let's crank on it and see what shows up here. Here we go. Boy, that sounds good, doesn't it? But uh, the important thing is we are getting a reading from our speed sensor as you saw the rpm came up and we also had some oil pressure so it is not the speed and timing sensor that's causing the problem i guess the next thing to do is stick a fuel pressure gauge on here crank it and see what we're getting for fuel pressure this is a test port right here or it should be anyway yeah so i've got a gauge that'll hook onto that and we'll see what it shows
ain't quite enough fuel pressure. It's borderline. I'm gonna start it and run it on ether a little bit and watch this fuel pressure gauge a little bit more. This way we don't have to rely on the starter. I can't get it to catch and go. See, that's what I thought. You get it spinning a little bit, the pressure comes on up there. And I mean, that should have been plenty of fuel pressure to make it go. It should have lit off and went. Well, I don't know. There just ain't no reason that it ain't running, but it ain't running. The next most logical thing for me to do here is to pull this ECM off and stick a different one on. I've got several spares, so I'll flash one up for a C10, stick it on here and see if anything changes. It's not the way you'd necessarily do it in the real world. If you didn't have a spare ECM, you wouldn't want to just buy one at this point. There's a lot more troubleshooting that could be done, but since I've got them, it's quick and easy to do. That's what I'm going to do don't really expect it to change anything it's pretty rare to find an ecm that you can communicate with like we could with this one and then the ecm not be good to run the engine but it can happen so let's try that and see what we get all right i've got the ecm swapped out got the fuel system primed back up and everything here is covered in fuel now so shouldn't be long before it's on fire check this plug out here this is the plug that feeds all the injectors Everything there is good and clean. That was not the problem. We're kind of running out of things that uh, it can be here. So anyway, uh, I'm powering the ECM off these two batteries now. I've already tried it. That was not the problem. That battery over there was plenty good, but uh, this will be fine too. So here we go. Let's try her out. Wide glide. Now that's what I figured, it was not the ECM either. Okay, so this is a real quick and dirty and uh, probably not recommended way to see if the injectors are pulsing. So this is gonna be kinda hard to do. I need three hands and I ain't got but two, but uh, if you'll watch right here at the very end of that light bulb and that test light, when I crank this thing, you'll see it trying to light up. And it's not gonna light up all the way because it's happening so fast, but if you'll watch the filament, you'll see it get bright and go dim and get bright and go dim. All right, so you should have been able to see that light bulb pulsing on and off. And what that is is a signal from the ECM telling the injector solenoid here to fire, or in other words, telling the injector to inject fuel. 
All right, well, I think it's time to dig into the fuel system a little deeper than what I have so far. I think the first thing I'll do is pull the fuel filter off here, dump it out, see if there's anything interesting in it. And then after that, I'll probably start pulling injectors out, take a look at them and see what they look like. Not seeing anything unexpected here. Much as I hated to do it, I sacrificed a new filter here. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that other one, but. I'm gonna try to get it to fire on ether first and then uh, keep feeding a little to it. And hopefully it'll go ahead and prime up and take off running. All right, so it wasn't the filter. I'm really starting to think this engine was underwater or something from the amount of water that was in here under the valve covers. And then uh, every time I crank on it, we've got water running out the exhaust. That's water, that's not oil. That's water mixing with the soot and stuff inside that pipe. And then if you look in here, that doesn't look too great either. Time to start pulling injectors. All right, let's see if these will come out of here now. Got the injector pop loose. It should come out of here now. Yep, there's our culprit, rust. That's the uh, fuel gallery area there where that's all rusted up right here. So you can bet that that's what the inside of the injector probably looks like too, and that's the issue. I'm gonna pump the hand primer here and you can watch down in the hole. You'll be able to see fuel shoot out of the fuel gallery. Here we go. So we definitely had fuel getting to the injectors. We verified everything else was there. We were getting pulls from the ECM. Everything is here to make it run. It's just that uh, these injectors are no good. And now that I can see them, that's no surprise. I went over and grabbed a good clean C15 injector. This is the fuel gallery area on this injector. And that's what it should look like. It should be nice and clean bare metal. And then this is the injector I pulled out of the C10. I don't even know what you'd call this stuff. It's not really rust. I mean, it's got some rust in it, but it's thick and it's sticky. I've seen it form before, but I don't know what it is. But uh, anyway, yeah, so that stuff is all inside of that injector body. And there's a lot of really small and really tight tolerance parts in there. And they just won't tolerate any kind of stuff like that. That won't work. I'm gonna go ahead and pull all six injectors out of it, and uh, then I'll figure out where I'm going with this after that.
Okay, I've got all six injectors out of it now. All six of them are completely screwed. That's why it wouldn't hit a lick even on one hole. So I've got a little bit of a decision to make here. I bought this thing to be a parts engine. So I need it torn down to the bare block. I mean, it doesn't do me any good for it to be all together. So I can go ahead and just tear it down and call it done. Or option two would be to uh, go out there, steal the injectors out of my excavator, stick them in here and fire it up. Now that serves absolutely no purpose to me. It'll be a monumental waste of time. Well, I'm out here pulling the injectors out of this excavator. Got some injectors now, so all these came out of the excavator here on this side of the piece of wood. These look a whole lot better than those. This is one of the excavator injectors. So these injectors have got three O-rings on them. There's one on the bottom here. And those will always turn into like that. They're gonna turn hard and brittle. Basically gonna turn into just a, um, what you might call a carbon dam. That's what they're designed to do. And then the second one typically should stay more like a rubber O-ring. These usually will get a little hard, like this one has. Half of it uh, stayed stuck in the excavator cylinder head, so. Here's a quick way you can check, see if you got any major cylinder damage, if you suspect that you do. The injector out, you can take a rubber tip blow nozzle, stick it down in there, and it'll pretty much seal up in that cup. And then just, Give it a little pressure. See, it rotated the engine and uh, covered me and all kinds of stuff, but that'll tell you that at least the, the cylinder is there. It's not gonna tell you that it's, you know, it could still be worn out, but it's not completely trashed. It doesn't have a hole in the piston or anything major like that. O-rings are lubed up with some sill glide. In the hole she goes. All right, I've got the excavator injectors in it now. And I'm putting the rocker arms on. I was kind of studying this deal a little bit here, trying to figure out how the Jakes get their supply of oil. If you know anything about Jakes, you know that they work hydraulically using engine oil. So they've got to have a supply of oil from somewhere. And there's only three points of contact where the Jakes really touch the engine. So you've got a bolt here, and then you've got a stud that comes through here with a nut on top, and a stud that comes through here with a nut on top. And that's the only three things that hold that housing down to the engine. There's the underside of one. So, couldn't figure it out where the oil was coming from at first. And I got to looking at this, this nut right here that's on top of the rocker pedestal. If you look at that, you're gonna see like three little half moon shaped passages that they've got drilled in that nut. There's one around the back here. So that's where the oil's coming from. Obviously, uh, this rocker pedestal has oil coming up through it to lubricate the rocker arms on the rocker shaft in here. And then oil is also flowing through those three little half moon shaped passages. Jake housing is sitting on top of this nut and it's flowing around the threads in this stud into the Jake housing. And then another thing I thought was kind of interesting is the way that they supply the injectors with fuel here. So let me put this light down. Each one of these deals right here, these little bridges across here, those are actually drilled with a supply passage and a return passage, each one of them. What you've got happening is fuel's coming in from the, you know, through the filter head and in through this rail. It's going into the cylinder head in three different spots. One of them right here, one in the middle, one up here. And so this little bridge right here 
is supplying the fuel to this injector and then it's got a, a return passage drilled in it also so the fuel is flowing in and out internally through these so that would be for number six that one would be for number five that one would be for number four that one's for number three and so on kind of an interesting design there too uh doesn't prime up as well as like a 3406e or c15 but all in all i kind of like this little engine and this little hole right down here the one in the middle uh well just use a push rod i don't like push rod engines but i guess they're good for something that little hole right there that is the oil supply hole for the rocker pedestal so there's one of those for each rocker pedestal down through here so the master piston on these jakes is right there contacts the uh, injector rocker arm right here on this flat spot just like you'd expect and then the slave piston on the jakes which that is the foot of the slave piston right there i'm tapping on it pushes down on this little leg right here on top of this valve bridge and that's how it pushes the exhaust valves open that's a little different setup than what i'm used to All right, I've got it all back together now. So it should be ready to fire it up. A couple things I'm looking for to happen here. Uh, number one, I want it to start, obviously. I'm gonna look real stupid if it doesn't after all this. And uh, number two, Jesus, calm down. Number two, I want it to miss on cylinder number two. And you're probably asking, well, why would you want it to miss on cylinder number two? Ever since that excavator got here, it's had a miss in it in one hole, and I diagnosed it the other day to be number two. Now that I've got the injectors in this engine out of the excavator engine, and I put them in here in the same hole that they were in in that engine, I want that miss to follow into this engine, because if it does, that means that it's the injector causing the problem and that's what I want it to be. That's a whole lot easier to fix than if it's some kind of cylinder damage or something more substantial like that. But we'll troubleshoot that or check on that after we get the thing going. Let's just get this thing fired up right now. Everything's live here. Got the ECM uh, connected to battery so it's powered up. Think I've got it primed, but I'm not 100% sure. This thing's kind of hard to get primed, so it may crank a little before it starts or it may fire right up, I don't know, but uh, I guess let's just give her wide glide on that. All right, you son of a bitch, you're gonna start this time. Here we go. Well, that was encouraging, but not for very long. Okay, here we go again. not primed let me let me work on that some more still don't know if it's prime but it ought to be closer nope losing my patience with it here
she's a runner. I knew it would. Just uh, had to give it a little help with some ether to get the fuel pressure to come on up and get it to kick on off. The other good news is it had an obvious miss in it, I'm sure you could tell. And so, like I've already explained, that's what I wanted to happen. What I've done now is I've pulled the uh, connector off of injector number two here. So I'm gonna fire it up again. It should sound exactly the same as it did. And that's gonna confirm that it was number two that was missing. Because obviously number two injector can't even fire now. So uh, I think you're following me. We want, to see, we want it to be exactly like it just was. And that's gonna confirm to me that that's a bad injector. All right, let's see if it'll start on its own without any ether now. Should be primed. Yeah, sounds exactly the same. So got a bad injector there. So what I'll do is just buy a new one, stick the other five back in the excavator along with the one new one and the excavator should run on all six then. Let's test these three Jake heads out now. Just a minute, get some oil pressure. If anybody wants these jakes, let me know. I'll sell them to you. I don't have any use for them. I think they're just fine. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a kit in them, but other than that, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. So uh, that's the C10. I think I'm just gonna leave it together for now. It's probably not a good enough engine that I would ever put it in anything without rebuilding it or going through it. Uh, I guess that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.